are back with you live from the LinkedIn Hub at Advertising Week. And I have with me Carter Murray, who is the CEO of FCB Worldwide. Carter, I know that you spoke on a panel, or, and you, you've done some cool things while you're here, and actually interviewed someone, which I'm kind of jealous because I should be doing the <laughs> interviews, but I'm, I'm going to let this one slide because it's probably something I wouldn't know much to talk about anyway. Um, but one of the main themes that, that you and I were talk, talking about is talent. It yes. seems to be a big deal. The first thing I want to ask, and this has come up several times, and so I want to know, why is talent such a big deal? Why is it such a big buzzword here? It seems like... You know, in companies 50, 60, 70 years ago, you wanted talented talent. Well, right. So I think, ta especially in our industry, talent's always been important. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's two things that have emerged. One is, uh, I think we're seeing an exodus of talent uh, towards technology companies and social media companies as they are growing at such high speed, they're recruiting a lot from our industry. Um, and I also think when you look at them and other technology and startups and the cultures they're building, mm -hmm. we have to make sure that we are building a relevant culture for the next generation of talent as well. Mm -hmm. um, and if we don't get it right, we won't get the right talent in our business. So I think that's one of the reasons it's been a big topic of discussion. Mm -hmm. Well, what are, what are some of the interesting findings that you're feeling? Well, findings is a big word. It makes it sound very scientific. But what are some of your insights onto what really matters in your search for great talent in today's advertising world? Well, I think that it's, it's, it's a big question because there's many, many ways to answer it. I think one of the main things when I look at the recruitment of talent, our industry, the advertising business, um, has some legacy issues when it comes to women in advertising. Mm. I don't know if you know this, but only 15% of uh, the creative community in advertising are women. Mm. Um, and I think we, and at FCB, we've got a lot of work to do ourselves to make sure that we get the balance right. And we recruit talent from lots of different places. Mm -hmm. So um, I think one of the things that we've tried to do is make sure that how we recruit, where we go to recruit, the recruiting process um, is trying to make sure that we, we throw as diverse a net as possible. Mm -hmm. Because I think the more diverse you are, the more you get um, a mix of creativity and get to great creative ideas. Mm -hmm. Do you think also, and, and I spoke to someone much earlier about the, this idea of diversity in, in your creative pool and the people working for you, do you think that that is the reflection that helps become a reflection of the, the larger culture, the culture at large of the people that you're also trying to reach? Because ultimately these people have a better representation, have a better sense of what's going on. I, I think that's a great point. And, yeah. I, and I think, you know, we, um, we need to have a, a fair representation from all different walks of life. Uh, if we're going to say that we really understand people and consumers, it's mm -hmm. helpful when the agency has a, di you know, a diverse group mm -hmm. um, in which to try and understand people and come up with really great creative ideas. Mm -hmm. So one of the things you talked about in your panel was this, the, the concept of implicit bias. Is that you know we, we, we all have something going on in the back of our mind in a place that we may not think about so often, you know, yeah. our subconscious, where we are drawn to certain things right? yep. or certain yeah. types of people or whatever. So I want to talk about that in, in, in the context sure. of what we're talking about. Sure. Well, you know, it's interesting. I talked about it on the panel yesterday, and I actually came up with it on, on, on the spot, but, oh, but well, which was quite a shock for me, honestly. <laughs> um, but but one of the, there is a test you can do on implicit bias on lots of different things. But for instance, do you have an implicit bias? to men or women. And I found after I did this test that I had a slight bias towards women, okay. which was slightly strange for me as a man. Well, because I'm a man, so you would think you would have a bias towards men. And then I realized it made me explore my past and realize my mother was an entrepreneur. Uh, and my mother was brought up in a household where the woman was not supposed to work. Mm -hmm. And she spent most of her professional life trying to prove to her father that she could do it as well as her twin brother. Mm -hmm. um, for her, by and, the way. Just... Yeah, and she succeeded. Mm -hmm. But she always had that issue. And so I grew up feeling that was incredibly unfair. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, doing the implicit bias workshop, I think, is not just to help you understand how you are with people, but it, it, it forces you to think about yourself as a person. Mm -hmm. and, An introspective um, process as well. It, yeah. yeah, well it was, it was for me at least. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And I think then when you try and recruit people and you try and interact with people, I think it makes those interactions richer. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it makes you more... When you're more aware of your own When you're more aware of your own position and self, and it makes you want to get other people's opinions that are different from your own before mm -hmm. you make an important hiring decision, promotion, uh, decision uh, and decision about talent in general. Mm. You know, someone someone way early on said to me um, that he thinks that we tend to hire 
um, people who are like us. I think that that is the implicit bias. Is we tend to feel more comfortable. It's kind of our comfort zone to just hire people that are like us. Like, right. You know, white males over 40, whatever. You know, and do you, do you feel like that's still happening, or is there a trend to, to change that and move out of it? I mean, it's, it's a very broad question. I can't speak for other people. Um, I can say that we are trying very hard to make sure that when people recruit across the world in all our different offices, that they are trying to recruit people that are different from themselves. I mean, there's all sorts of studies and I think experiences that, you know, you want people on your team that are not mirror images of yourself. Um, I certainly don't want that. It would be a disaster. Um, you guys don't have to rebuild the buildings you're all working in. Yeah, well, with my height, you mean, yeah. No, but I, I think you want to hire, you know, mm -hmm. if you're an extrovert, it's really great to have an introvert on the team. Mm -hmm. You know, if you come from one background, it's great to have someone from a different background to give you perspective. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's something we, we try to do. But again, you know, we have, you know, we're, we're a company which is, you know, over a century old. And we have some legacy issues like a lot of, of big companies that we need to resolve. And we're not there yet. but. We're working hard every single day to try and get that. Mm -hmm. So we've, you know, in all my interviews that I've done so far, we have talked about talent very a little bit. But we're always talking when we're talking about people. We're always talking about the consumers, mm -hmm. the people we're trying to reach, the people we're trying to sell stuff to. Right. You and I have been talking for I don't know seven or eight minutes. We haven't mentioned those people at all. <laughs> so it's just you know kind of funny in the advertising world. But yep. um, so let's talk about that. And as a reflection of this, I mean, you know, is is. Are those two things married to each other? Are they tied to each other somehow? The talent and the companies and oh, the people? I think they absolutely are. And I think one of the things that, that's happening today is that consumers are saying they're not just buying a product uh, and not even a brand. Sometimes it's the company behind the brand. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, I think uh, the purpose of a company is really important to people today. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think as an advertising agency, the reason I'm talking about our people and, and, and talent is we need to make sure that, that we have our house in order and that we have the right set of values and the right approach and we believe in the right thing. Um, so that our clients who are selling to consumers, we mm -hmm. don't sell to consumers, they do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, trust us and work with us for the right reasons. Um, mm -hmm. Not just that we have great creative and we have great insights into those into consumers, mm -hmm. but that we are big a big data, big data. The, the, yeah, the catchphrase, big, big data. But, I gotta say it. Yeah, you gotta say. <laughs> gotta but, say. <laughs> but also that we actually, as a company, care about our people. And you know, when you have eight thousand people, mm -hmm. to do that consistently with every person is really, really, really hard. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think we're clear about our aim, but we work every every day to try and do that and, and we don't always succeed but I like to think we succeed more than we fail. Mm -hmm. I think yeah I mean trust and, and company values have, been, have become a really big deal in terms of reaching consumers. I think it is and, a big deal yeah, and I think and it's a big deal to consumers. Absolutely. I think that's the point. Absolutely. It's not just to employees but I think people in the larger world really want to know that the company that, that is associated with their products and their brands and with themselves um, is a company that has a set of values they can relate to. Mm -hmm. So someone said something to me interesting that I thought was kind of interesting this morning, which was that you know nowadays with with brands being able to communicate so directly with their consumers, and you know you could almost cut out the agency. And I said, of course not, because you know you need the agency for a lot of things. But he said, but what I mean to say more is that the agency almost needs to become a part of the brand. They need to be really an integral part of understanding that brand, understanding the brand's values and the brand's, not just like, oh, okay, so your laundry detergent, you know, gets your whites whiter or whatever. Mm -hmm. So what do, where do you fall on that? Do you think that that's really a critical thing right now or are there things that are more critical? Well, I think at the end of the day, ad agencies will survive as long as they have true creativity at the core. And I don't mean about just creativity is a buzzword, but in terms of the culture. Mm -hmm. um, and I think creative people that come up with these amazing ideas and these great ways of inspiring and connecting with people in the world um, need to work in a space and an environment that allows them to do that. And mm -hmm. a lot of clients um, are exceptionally good at what they do, but mm -hmm. that is not exactly what they do. So mm -hmm. I think as long as we we look after creative people and foster creative culture, I think there will always um, be a need for um, for us, I hope. I hope. Well, I hope so too. Well, that's my got, plan. You've got 8,000 people oh, on your hands. That's a big responsibility. <laughs> so, but that's the plan. Um, in terms of, you know, in terms of doing more than just advertising and selling a product, I think the best relationships with clients are where it's a partnership, mm -hmm. where we're not a vendor. And I think if I look at some of our best relationships, we are so joined together at the hip. Mm -hmm. um, that that we think about their business as much as they do, right. um, and they respect our creative talent as much as we do, mm -hmm. and that's where you have the perfect union, where you can do really great creative work, 
and you know that you're so tied to their business that you can make a direct and immediate impact. So it's no longer the day of here's the creative, you know. So what's the creative? Give it to the people. Well, Where's the creative? It is sometimes. What's, I'm sorry. What's the brief? I'm sorry. I'm thinking like, oh, well, here's the brief. It is sometimes, yeah. but I would say that's not the perfect time, uh, the perfect environment, and the perfect relationship. When Absolutely. it's like that, Absolutely. I think you can still get you can get something good sometimes, but to get something great today, it's all about partnership and, yeah. and, and really collaborating with people. Carter, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of it's advertising. It's been fun. Thank you for having me. Thank I appreciate you. it. Pleasure. Take care. Take care.